In the Belgian Congo, where many Alur also lived, they were regarded differently to their Ugandan counterparts. The Belgian District Commission of Mahangi wrote of them as civilizers of hordes. In the vast ethnic wilderness of eastern Zaire, the administrators saw their lure as ray of hope, an intelligent and progressive people with a capacity to rule over others and bring them to order. The Alur is a Western Nilotic language spoken in the northeastern Ituri province of the Democratic Republic of Congo and the Southwest Nile region of Uganda. So here's a comparison of Alur, Lua of Kenya, and the English language for those who are non Luo speakers. We Guamanie Polo, which just means our father, Huatineven. Dongingi Bed Leng. Don Ker Peri Bin. Don Yen Machuini Yenyo Utimbre. Ingom Chalo Mitimbre Koi Polo. So here, the assumption is Ngom is Earth. Otimbre, similar to Otimbre in Kenyan Luo. So you can go through it and do a comparison. You get to learn a little bit of Arur Luo. And here's more of the comparison. Rom Rom, Chalo Wego. So Wego is like father. And they also call Wegua, as you could, could see in the previous prayer. We call Wonwa, they call it Wego. Please keep comparing and learning a little bit of allure. In modern classification, allure is classified under Southern Lure, General Lure, Western Nilotic, and Nilotic. The dialects in Alur include Jokot, who are the Highland Alur, Jonam, Lowland, Ngora, Mambisa, and Nyoro. Most sources do not mention Ngora, so if you speak Ngora dialect, kindly comment below. The Alur of DRC reside in a country located in Central Africa, bordering the Atlantic Ocean, and countries like Angola, Burundi, Central African Republic, Republic of Congo, Rwanda, South Sudan, Tanzania, Uganda, Zambia, and Gabon. Alur territory includes the northwestern shores of Lake Albert and River Nile. The lacustrine and riverine areas have a steep elevation of about 600 meters, then gradually rise to hilly plateaus averaging between 1,500 and 1,800 meters, lots of rainfall and very fertile soil. So that's DRC, where the Alura are located. The historical changes in the area, 15 July, 1898, Stanley Falls District to District of Oriental Province. 1913, it became Oriental Province. 1933, it was divided into Stanleyville and Costamanville, later Kivu. 1947, it was renamed Oriental. 1963, it was broken into Kibali, Ituri, and those others. 1966, Oriental province was reconstituted. In 2015, it was again 
dissolved into the provinces of Ituri and the other three. Alur population is currently estimated at 1.4 million. Ituri population, approximately 4 million. The Alur are found in Mahagi territory, northwest Jalasiga. Still on Alur territory, they actually claimed land east of Alur territory and the Alur lost land in 1952 with the creation of the National Game Park. Subsequently, they incorporated some Sudanic speaking groups into their society as they expanded to the west. Alur sources say Nilak was impregnated by a nun named Ochak. Could this be Osir? Ochak lived in the sky. She gave birth to Opodo, who was the first human ancestor on earth. Alur, just like all other Luos, began their migration journey from Eridu. Please watch our origins playlist for further information on that. According to Alur elders, Luo people migrated southwards along the Nile from Bar El Ghazal in Sudan, settled in West Nile. King Olum, born in the lineage of Opodo, was the son of Nilak. Some sources say he was her father. Regardless, three brothers, Nipir, Nyabongo, and Tiful, in Acholi, they are Gipir, Labongo, and Gipul or Sipul, descended from her. Fast forward to Nipir, Labongo, Stagger. The two brothers conflicted over the throne after the death of their father. Nyabongo decided to lay a trap for Nipir. Coincidentally, an elephant went into Nipir's home. He then rushed to his brother's house to borrow a spear and unfortunately Nyabongo was not at home. So he asked his wife Nyawino to give him a spear. She refused. He went ahead and took the first spear he laid his hands on, which he hurled at the elephant. Suddenly for him, the elephant made it away with the spear. He tried to follow it in vain. On learning what his brother had done, Nyabongo was outraged. Nipir tried to convince him to take a replacement, but Nyabongo insisted that he wanted the royal spear. Crestfallen, Nipir packed some roasted peas called peke. His guard filled with water, he set for the forest. One day, an old woman approached him. What brings you here, my son? The old woman asked. Kneeling down and removing his head condo as a show of respect, he replied, I'm looking for an elephant that ran with my spear. The old woman father asked, What are you carrying on your back? He replied, I'm carrying peke. She requested, Can you spare me some? Nipir poured out some peke into the old woman's basket. She thanked him. After a few more tests, she led him into her heart and told him to pick his spear from those in her room. Nipir could not miss the royal spear. Although history is said to repeat itself, this story is uncannily similar to that of Nikango and Demo. We'll feature that in this channel at a later date. Stay tuned.